I'm sorry to say that the time has come to sell my Volvo 850R because I bought this Volvo 850R. This is my new 1997 850R 5-speed. Look at that. It's got a manual transmission. I've been wanting one of these for about a decade. Actually, since high school. I've been wanting one of these forever. So let's back up a little bit and I'll tell you guys the story of how I bought it. It all started with a few friends sending me a post from the Unique Cars for Sale 2.0 group on Facebook. And there was this five speed swapped 850R for sale up on Bring a Trailer. I took a look at it, I called the owner, we talked for about an hour. The car seemed really well sorted and in really good shape. It was exactly what I've been looking for all these years. So I decided I was pretty much dead set right then and there. I'm not gonna let this car go to anyone else. I have to win this auction. So it bid all the way up to $8,900. It was a really pretty intense last two minutes. Um, and I won it. So I flew out to Boston, met up with Tedward. We, uh, we went and picked it up and it was, it's gorgeous. It's great. It was over boosting a little bit. Uh, some of the turbo control valve lines were a little bit loose plugged into the TCV. So we tightened those up when I just got home actually. And, uh, it's running great. I also put a new air filter in a new lower transmission torque mount and the car runs, drives, shifts incredibly well. It needs a couple little things here. There's a little bit of a fuel tank leak when I fill it up and um, could use some new front strut mounts. Otherwise, for 160,000 miles on this thing, it is minty, it is pristine, it is gorgeous. Um, yeah, I I can't express how much I've been wanting one of these for so long. I've literally had dreams at night about my first car and then I wake up and I realize I don't have it anymore and I just get bummed out. Every, probably once a week, I go on Craigslist searching for my first Volvo 850. It's become a little bit of a, uh, just a regret that I ever sold it. But I'm so glad I bought this. So I am actually selling my 96, um, my automatic. In some ways that car is cleaner than this. In some ways this car is cleaner than that. Um, you know, they're both fantastic examples. My 96 has a few, a few less miles on it. So about 122,000 miles on it as opposed to 159 here. But with these old Volvos, really it depends on their maintenance history and how they've been cared for. I'm gonna do a comparison video. I wanna, before I get rid of it, I do wanna make some content on both cars and kind of see how they feel and compare. Um, oh man, I'm just, I am so excited to own this thing finally. And uh, it drives as well as I always wanted one of these to drive. Um, you know, my dream car has always secretly been a manual Volvo 850R with a limited slip diff. This is an open diff, but that's something I can always address in the future. Um, you know, this to me means as much as buying my ultimate supercar dream car, a GT3. I mean, it's it's just that special to me. So this is honestly one of my first drives in the car in um, in a spirited fashion. I pretty much just cruised back from Boston uh, in this the other day, and it was a nice 13 hour drive, but really I didn't get a chance to push it much. It's had a really good maintenance history. Everything's been taken care of that needed to be. Uh, it's pretty much brand new air conditioning, which is always a major issue with these cars, very expensive repair. Um, and I think the automatic transmission was starting to go out too, and that's why they were swapped to be a manual. Um, the owner before the, pre the guy I bought it from uh, it seemed like he did a lot of the work himself, really took good care of the car. Uh, with the previous owner, the rods were replaced, bender rod, over boosting, uh, probably at a shop somewhere in New Hampshire. Um, so that's nice, it has stronger, stronger rods, which I can throw a little bit more power at it if I want to. I really like it in stock configuration, but basically the only thing I'm going to do to this is maybe just a little refresh here and there cosmetically and with some minor parts and uh, throw the turbo back IPD exhaust on from my other car. This has a TME exhaust, but it has both mufflers and it's a little bit louder. 
than stock, but ultimately it sounds about the same. I also bought a few things from IPD and FCP. Uh, we're gonna do the 302 millimeter brake upgrade, but this is fresh brakes, so I'm gonna wait till these wear out a little bit, get some more life out of them. Oh man, I am absolutely thrilled to have this. I think, uh, you know, it's important to keep sight of what is important to you and not necessarily what's important to other people in your car buying decisions. Um, you know, there's something to be said about finding that one car that you've always kind of wanted. And in this case, this is a, this is kind of a case of me meeting my heroes and not being disappointed. Uh, I was a little bit nervous to see how this car would drive with the turbo motor. I'm used to the naturally aspirated engine. I was worried about the swap being a little bit wonky, but everything is so dialed in. It's a really, really, really nice car. And it reminds me so much of my first car. It's just, it's just way faster. This does have a tune, so it has a, um, a tuned manual ECU. I'm not sure if it's an IPD tune or what the tune is. Uh, it runs and feels pretty much stock, uh, and that aided in cruise control working too. The only other thing I did was I swapped over my uh, my tires from the BRZ, actually, the stock Michelin Primacy tires from the BRZ. Um, And uh, those ride great, they feel awesome. They're nice and quiet, no vibrations. There was a little bit of a front toe out issue where uh, the alignment was pretty off and that wore out, wore through the whole set of tires that were came on the car. So now that's all sorted, this thing is good to go. I really just, ah, I'm so excited. But if you are interested in my 96, um, there's a lot of videos on that car. Everything in that car is in really, really good shape. It's a beautiful, beautiful A50 Artist ceramic coating. It's the paint on that thing is incredible, and it drives really nice too. I'm gonna be doing a few things before I sell. Uh, putting another lower transmission torque mount in from uh, FCP and a couple of maintenance items, but ultimately it's ready to go. That is a fantastic car. Um, I'm gonna be posting that up. If you're interested, hit me up on Instagram at the Topher Two. Uh, links also in the description. And um, yeah, I don't know if I'll put it up on Bring a Trailer or anything. I'll probably just sell it privately. And um, Bring a Trailer might be a last resort, but we'll see. Before then, though, definitely expect a couple of videos on both cars. I kind of want to compare the automatic and the manual transmissions and uh, just kind of take you on a walk through or walk around with both vehicles. While I got them, might as well enjoy them. One thing that I'm really impressed with this car, and it just kind of goes to show that the way a car is cared for is more important than the mileage. I mean, this thing rides so tight, it feels so nice and stiff, and yeah, it's a it's a 90s Volvo, the dash rattles. Um, the mounts are not broken though, which is good. Um, that's a really common issue with these cars. But it just feels tight. It feels really well sorted and properly maintained throughout its life. It seems like it's had a, a, a good history and good owners who have taken care of it. Uh, that just makes me really happy. I'm, I'm so glad that I was able to find one in this condition because they're getting harder and harder to source these days. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Stock suspension. I may do the IPD sway bars again sometime. I don't know. It, this is this stock suspension is pretty darn good. It's a little bit stiffer in the 850R and a little bit better dialed in. The one thing I would like to do is throw a front limited slip differential in there. This one tire fire business is, is fun and exciting, but uh, <laughs> you gotta have a front wheel drive car with a diff with the power that this is putting down. It's probably putting down close to about 260, 270. Uh, now with the new TCV and it's not over boosting maybe a little bit less probably closer to stock levels 
but it feels healthy. It feels a, it's a great motor. It's dead quiet, super smooth, um, and of course it just had a, a lot of things refreshed on it. Check this out. Cruise control. Here we go. Uh, this is how I drove 12 hours back from Boston. Just chilling, just relaxing. Everything in this car works. The speakers, the radio, the sound system, the CD player, the tape player. Um, it's a really, really nice overall package. And I, uh, I do not mind having paid $8,900 for one. If anything, that's a little bit of a a little bit of a mark in the values of these 850Rs. I'm hoping that they start to go up a little bit more. For a long time, they've kind of been sitting at, you know, four, five, six grand for not very nice ones. And I'm hoping that nicer examples will start, will start to be going closer to 12, 13. Um, you know, I, I'd like to get about 10 for mine. So, you know, the higher these cars go, the more people will take care of them, the better maintenance they will see, and uh, maybe we'll start to see some being restored too. It's pretty easy to find parts for these still. Volvo uh, made so many of these parts similar for the C70, the, uh, you know, 850, the, the, uh, the wagons, the sedans, everything pretty much carries over from that era. There are a few things that are hard to source, like the R bumper, for example, but you can usually find those used every now and then. Yeah, I'm not necessarily looking for more power out of this. I would like to upgrade the brakes and just get a little bit more sound out of it. The handling feels pretty good. But, oh man, what a great car. park this and I'll give you guys a little bit of a walk around. rattles so much you kind of ignore it and it fades off into the distance. Ah, oh, this shifter. It brings back so many memories, guys. It really does. Again, this R suspension is a little bit stiffer than the standard Volvo A50, so these things can handle decently well. The drivability on this car is great too. When I first got into it, it was a little bit funky, but I've since got it dialed in pretty well. I think uh, getting that computer to talk to the wastegate and to the, the turbo is really important. It's a tough one to get right sometimes. All right, let's park this in the shade. I'll show you around a little bit more. One thing I do need to tighten up a little bit are the handbrake, the parking brake shoes. This is a really clean example. The, again, the paint doesn't pop as much as mine does. There's a little bit of fading going on if you look at it under harsh light or in direct sun, but ultimately it's in really good shape. A couple little scuffs and road rash marks here and there, but that just shows to that just goes to show that all the body panels are pretty much original and they haven't been painted over. I think the only thing that's been repainted in this car is the spoiler because of a little bit of fading. I did order uh, a new coolant expansion tank and I have all new coolant hoses for everything. So depending on how everything looks and checks out, I might start replacing that. 
Uh, definitely going to do the expansion tank and the level sensor soon. But it's such a nice quiet engine, it just purrs away, it's happy. This car does have the Euro turn signals, which I'm not sure I'm too crazy about, to be honest. And it has the, uh, the strut tower brace. Headlight wipers. <laughs> And these tiny little 280 millimeter front brakes. Yeah, we'll get through those pretty quickly, I think. And I'll get back to my Porterfield R4S pads, which felt fantastic on my 96R. One of the biggest things about this car that impresses me is just how clean the interior is. It looks like no one's really sat in this thing except for the driver's seat. Even the passenger seat is minty. This has definitely seen a lot of highway miles really a lot of care there's so many cool things with these cars they're they're easy to work on and these R's were just the nicest versions of the Volvo 850 again last mo last model year that the 850 was made after this they've transitioned over to the s70 which was a little bit more rounded and I was never really as crazy about the looks the s70 t5 R's are, are the R's S70Rs are pretty nice, but... And of course, a lot of people love the wagons. Personally, my first car was a sedan, so for me, it's always had to be the sedan. All right, guys, well, that's gonna wrap it up. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, we are definitely gonna start seeing some more Volvo content now going forward, just because we have a manual transmission and a fresh car, and I'm gonna make this a little bit of a project. This is gonna be fun. We're gonna, we're gonna do some cool things with this car. I, um, I never really got too much video content on my 96, and that was for a couple reasons. One, it was an automatic and it was boring to watch on YouTube. And uh, two, the windows were tinted and I could have gotten them untinted, but it did look pretty good and it was a really nice tint job that uh, my buddy Jared did with it when he owned the car. And But it made it really weird to see uh, out from the inside with exposure. So the side window was really dark, the front window was really bright, and the interior was really dark. And you never quite got a really nice uh, depiction of what it was like to drive the car. It was always kind of this funky, uh, blown out exposure. So those were the two biggest reasons why I didn't really film much content on the car. We've got a few videos, you know, there's a playlist on the channel main page that you can check out if you want to see some videos on it. But going forward, this is going to be uh, well documented and uh, well enjoyed, that's for sure. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you soon with a uh, few more videos from this week. With lots of press cars recently. A lot of fun stuff that I've been driving. And uh, ultimately, a comparison between this car and my 96. That should be fun. We'll see you later, guys. Take it easy.